Hey guys, my name is Brad Livingston. I'm the lead pastor here at Transformation Church, and we are so excited to have you with us today. I pray that this message that you're about to watch encourages you. I hope that it restores hope to your life. I pray that as you watch it, God draws you closer to himself and that you get a clearer picture of not only who he wants to be in your life, but who he wants you to be. Uh, we have a vision here at Transformation Church that says that we exist to see people transform from who they are to who God wants them to be. And I know that this message is gonna take you on a journey closer to that person, that God has destined you and purposed you to be. For more information, you can go to transformationchurch.com or on your smartphone, you can go to mytc.life and you can find out all that we have for you here at TC. I know that God has a plan for you and let's get into this message as we discover exactly what God wants to speak to you today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good? Oh man, it's so good to see you guys here at Transformation Church. If I haven't got a chance to meet you, if you're new here, my name is Brad Livingston. I have the tremendous honor of pastoring this phenomenal group of people right here. And so give yourself a hand for being here today because we love each and every one of you. You're awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now listen, that nine o'clock crowd was ripping this morning. Y'all got extra sleep. So y'all better be ready to bring it. I'm just kidding. So you know, we're super excited to be in this series. It's called The Heart of the House. And pretty much The Heart of the House boils down to this idea that uh, at Transformation Church, we have what we call our code. It's called the TC Code. And it's 11 statements that frame who we are and what we believe. Not necessarily like theologically or, or like from a biblical context perspective. It's more about our heart. And so the heart of the house, it all comes from Luke chapter 15. And so these verses uh, and each code is attached to a different portion of Luke chapter 15. And so what we've been doing in the heart of the house series is taking a stroll through different weeks. We're covering different one of the 11 uh, portions of our code. And so uh, in the first week, uh, well, the first code that we covered rather was this idea of just one more. And this Just One More initiative, you'll see people walking around with t-shirts that say Just One More on them. And if you want one of those, we can get you one of those because we got some. You can have it for free. All right. But we just want you to buy into this idea that what we believe as a church is that we'll spare no expense at doing whatever it takes to reach just one more person for Jesus. How many of you got friends or family members right now that you know need Jesus and you've been praying for them? How many guys are glad to be a part of a church where the church will spare no expense at making sure that we can reach those people for Jesus? And so this idea of just one more. And then last week, uh, we covered this idea that our passion drives our pursuit and that we, we love who God loves because we love him. Uh, and so this week, we're going on to this idea that celebration is not optional. Turn to your neighbor and say celebration. This idea that celebration is not optional, all right? And so uh, as we get ready to get into today, what happens in, in Luke 15, there's a, a number of different stories or parables. Jesus constantly is taught in parables or stories. He used analogies a lot to help people understand what he was talking about. And in Luke 15, there's a story uh, of a man who had two sons, and what happened is the youngest son comes to uh, his father. His father was very wealthy. And so the youngest son comes to his father and he says, hey, I want my inheritance now. Usually you would get it after the father dies. But he says, I want my inheritance now. And so essentially what he was telling his father, because basically what he was asking for was a th one third of his father's entire estate. And so he comes in, he says, I want my inheritance. And so his, his father is going to give it to him. But essentially what he was saying is, I don't necessarily want you. I just want all the things you can give me. Now, 
a lot of us will look at that and be like, what a little jerk. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Just. But honestly, if we had to take a step back and look at our own prayer life, how many of us could honestly say, and you don't have to raise your hand on this, but could honestly say a lot of our prayer life looks like, God, I don't necessarily want you. I just want some of the things you can give me. God, God I, I don't necessarily want the giver of the gifts. I kind of just want the gifts. God, I don't want to spend more time in your presence. I really just need you to give me that promotion. And if we were honest with ourselves, we would probably say that at different points in our life, that's kind of what we look like. But what happens, the, older, uh, the, the father in love gives the younger brother uh, the third of his estate. He goes out and he spends it on gambling and women and, and, uh, and partying and doing all those friends, uh, doing all those things with his friends. And, and so he goes out and as he goes out to like, live this life, what happens is he goes broke. And when he goes broke, his friends disappear because how many know you can be the life of the party until there's no longer a party? So he goes broke, and he actually finds himself serving and, and serving by uh, serving these pigs, and he's eating out of the pig side. He's eating the slop with the pigs. I'm not talking about eating some bacon, y'all. I'm talking about he's eating with pigs. And he thinks to himself, he says, it's better to be a servant in my master's house than the master, or the, the servant in my father's house than the master of this pig pen. So he goes back to his father, expecting his father to be ready to just beat him up metaphorically and maybe even literally just he's ready he's ready and matter of fact he's rehearsing in his head he's like i'm going to tell my father this and i'm going to tell him that i'm going to tell him how sorry i'm going to tell him i don't want to be restored to a position i just want to serve and whatever i can do to be back in your house and so he's rehearsing all of that and when he gets to his father his father not only doesn't hear any of what he has to say his father runs out embraces him brings him back into the family and then throws him a party for coming back listen some of y'all Someone did you dirty one time and you ain't got nothing to say to him. You know what I'm he said, I said the, the dad is celebrating his son coming home. Much like God celebrates when you and I come to him. And so he celebrates, but you know who ain't happy about it? Older brother. How many of y'all ever seen some stuff? How, how many of y'all watch people get promotions on Facebook before? You just bitter. Be honest now. Come on. I said, how many of you have been praying for something in your life and you watch when somebody else gets something, they post in their new car. You sit in there like, God, they've been acting buck wild for three months out there doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm trying to get a car. I can't, but you letting them have one. Oh, don't be honest in here today. Right? How, how many of us would, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, but we would say, matter of fact, if we were real honest, we start judging them not according to God's righteousness, just according to ours. Because we just start saying, well, I'm a little better than them, not realizing that from God's perspective, we're all right here. And so the older brother looks at his dad and says, how could you throw him a party? You never do these things for me. And his dad looks at him, and this is where we pick up in Luke 15, 31 through 32. It's in your notes. The father says, my son, talking to the older brother, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to say this word with me, celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. It's this idea of celebration because at TC, celebration is not optional. That's our code for today. And as a matter of fact, it goes on in the breakdown for it is we will celebrate every story and every person because it all matters. Hear me today, wherever you come from, whatever life has brought you through up until this point, we're not worried about what you have come through. We're worried about where you are going. I'm not necessarily concerned with all the mistakes that you've made because I've made some, you've made some, we've all made some. We could all write a list. We could all write a book on what we've come through. What I'm wondering is how many people are ready for where God wants to take them. How many of, we, how many of us are ready to celebrate what God wants to do and is ready to do in your life? Because that's what we do at TC. We celebrate. Now, I thought I had to deal with this because... I figured people were expecting me to deal with this, so I'm going to just go ahead and dive right in. This Chick-fil-A and Popeye's business, listen, that's the Lord's chicken, y'all. 
Now, I ain't going to lie to you. That Popeye sandwich, sandwich, S-A-M-M-I-C-H. Y'all heard it right. That Popeye sandwich is good. Y'all ain't going to lie to you. Listen, I know Chick-fil-A is the Lord's chicken, but that Popeye, they, they doing something right over there. And so uh, I, I had the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Someone brought me one. I saw somebody selling one on Facebook Marketplace for $200. <laughs> Y'all seen them lines. <laughs> so somebody might pay for it. Anyways, but you know what? I, start, I started paying attention, and you want to you know what I realized? I'm not worried for Chick-fil-A, and I don't even think Chick-fil-A is worried for themselves. And no, it's not because they have Chick-fil-A sauce, even though that's a great step up on Popeye's. I'm not worried for Chick-fil-A. You want to know why? Because although their food is good, you want to know why people coming back keep, keep coming back? The service. How many of you know Sandy at the window just make you feel all good about yourself? How many of you know Chick-fil-A makes you feel like you're being celebrated, don't they? It's a beautiful 87 degrees today here at Chick-fil-A. My name is Brian. How can I help you today? Oh, well, my gosh, Brian. I was thinking about getting one sandwich, but I think I'm going to have two. Two Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. What else can I get for? You know, it's just like everything you feel like you're doing at Chick-fil-A is the right thing. Chick-fil-A ever got an order wrong for you? They have for me. But you know what? I figured that's just what the Lord wanted. He destined and ordained it ahead of time, so I just ate what they gave me. Chick-fil-A knows what's better for us better than we do, you know? So just, then you see him running. Y'all see that video on Facebook where the guy's running out with the meal because the person forgot it? They leave the 99 every time. Okay, so anyway, so, but all that to say, the reason I'm not worried about Chick-fil-A isn't just because their food is great. See, Popeye's has something special going on. This ain't a dig at Popeye's. And this is just an analogy for to help you understand something. Popeye's might have a good sandwich, but you know what you keep coming back for at Chick-fil-A? It's not the food, it's the culture. You keep coming back for the environment. You, know, wanna know, you wanna know what you keep coming back for? You keep coming back because you feel celebrated. See, people go where they're celebrated, not where they're tolerated. Any of y'all ever pulled up to a different fast food restaurant? Because Brian at Chick fil A, it's a beautiful 87 degrees here at Chick fil A. How can I take your order? Pull up to another fast food restaurant. Go ahead. People go where they're celebrated, not where they're tolerated. And in the culture, what we have to understand, both in churches, I don't know about you, but I've been in some churches before where people were tolerated, but they weren't celebrated. And for some of you in your life, you are tolerated, but you're not celebrated in your friend circles, on your job, in your neighborhood, the people you hang around, even the people you're trying to hang around to get joy from, they're tolerating you, but they're not celebrating you. And you can't figure out why you're miserable and depressed all the time. It's because the people you're around don't even want you around. Or you've convinced yourself that you're around people that don't want you around, even though they do. You want to know why? Because the culture you surround yourself in isn't healthy. Here at Transformation Church, we've made it our mission to be a bunch of Brian and Sandys. Y'all know I'm talking just, man, I want to love everybody. I want to celebrate everybody. You want to know why? We celebrate every person. Whatever God has brought you through, wherever you're going, whatever things you've come out of, whatever things you're about to step into, however you've not been blessed up until this point, but what God's about to release into your life, whatever your story is that you've come from, and whatever your story's about to be when God makes you a brand new creation, we celebrate you because your story and you as a person matter. Now, I don't know about you, but I need more of that in my life. Because the world has a good way of taking that away from us, doesn't it? But we want to put ourselves in an environment where we are, say the word with me, celebrated. Because celebration is not, say optional with me, optional. We want to be in the environment where people are constantly encouraged by who they're around and the message that they're hearing. Who are the people? You guys, a bunch of beautiful. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look good today. Look back at them and say, you look thinner than you did yesterday. Look at that. You just feel celebrated. Bre the breath of God just blew in this, but just you feel good about being you now. 
And one of the ways that we do that, that I love doing it, is we have the growth track, which what we believe is that God puts something inside of you, whoever you are, sir, ma'am, wherever you're at right now, there's something inside of you that God wants to use to do amazing things in your life. He's already put purpose in you. He's already put a destiny in you. He's already put great things in you. And we just got to figure out what they are so you can start using them to make a difference in people's lives. And so what happens is as you figure those out, you start to serve with them. And as you start to serve and make a difference in people's lives, we celebrate you because of what God is doing through you. And I take people like, like Leah, who was Dream Team of the Week two weeks ago. And every person around campus that has a lanyard on or a special shirt, there are Dream Teamers. And they serve every week and they're incredible. You guys are my heroes. But as they serve, what happens, you take Leah who serves in our pre-K with our kids over there and, and even John Chen who is on our creative team with the camera. He's running around taking pictures of everybody. And, and as they do that, what they're doing is using the gifts God gave them to make a difference in people's lives. And I think about Leah who, who was Dream Team of the Week two weeks ago and, and I think she probably hates when we talk about her because she's so shy. But, but what happened is, is I've seen little kids who were terrified to come into the class. And, and if they didn't come into the class, maybe they didn't even get the chance to, to hear about who Jesus was. But I watched Leah take a little kid by the hand and, and walk them into that class. And, and maybe for the very first time, that kid gets to hear about how much Jesus loves them. Because Leah was willing to step out and say, everything that I have, I want to use it to celebrate these kids. Not about you guys. But that's a hero in my book. What does God want to do in your life to help celebrate you and watch as you celebrate others? Because at TC, it's not an option. We celebrate every person and every story because it all matters. So as we celebrate, there are three things that God wants us to experience. Three things he wants to take us on a journey with. And we want to, we want to give those to you this morning as we talk about celebration. The first thing we want you to know is that celebration gives you time for resting. Celebration gives you time for resting. You see, when we stop to celebrate, what we get a chance to do is this right here. See, how many of us don't even take time? When God brings us through one season, we're already looking at the next one and preparing for battle. God brings us through one situation and we're already in the next situation and we never take time to rest in what God is doing in our lives. And what celebration does is it takes a, a step back from doing and it puts us in a position of resting in who God is in our life. It also focuses on his provisions. You see, there, there's two ways that we're blessed. There's two ways that you walk into a life that is blessed by God. Two things the Bible's very clear about if you want to live a life of blessing, how many want to live a life of blessing? Raise your hand. In the air, like you just don't care, okay? Just like, I want blessing. Hey, there it is. I want blessing in my life. There's two ways to do it. One is tithing. Now, I'm not going to talk about money today. That, wait, we'll take up the offering later, but you can let go of your wallets. Calm down. I'm not coming after your money, okay? So you can relax. You want to be blessed financially? Tithe, because when you put seed in the ground, you can expect a harvest. You don't know any farmers that don't plant any seed, but then go looking for a harvest, do you? You put something in the ground, you get something back. It's very simple. It's not always easy, but it's simple. We trust God. But the one I do want to talk to you about today is the Sabbath. You see, God created the earth in six days, and on the seventh, it says that he rested. And for many of us, we're grinding through life, working, doing everything we can. Man, we're, we're hustling, we're moving, we're going. And hear me for a second. There is only ever the opportunity to rest, and there, there, there's only time in our life that we can work for six days and then rest on the seventh and be blessed. But there's never time that we can work all seven days and step into blessing. Here's what happens. God says, if you'll work the six day, six days, and you'll rest on the seventh. It doesn't mean you can't leave your house. It just means you're not trying to provide for yourself. What it does is it says, all right, God, I did my six days, but my true blessing is your responsibility, not mine. It tells God, I need you more than I need me. And here's the best part. God says, if you'll give me what's mine, talking about tithing and rest, I'll bless you with a blessing you cannot contain. So you can keep working seven days a week if you want to. 
but you're never going to find yourself in abundance. But the minute you start giving God what's his in tithe and Sabbath, you'll watch God do more with the 90% of your income and the, and the six days that you work than you could have done with 100% in seven days. It doesn't make sense. That's why it's called faith. So we rest. First Kings 20, there's a story of King Ahab. He's going into battle, and it looks like they, there's no way that they could win in the natural. It just doesn't look like they could win. And so this is what God says. God says, I'm handing it over to you today so that you will know that I am Lord. Some of you, God is looking at you saying, I'm going to hand over to you your victory, your blessing, your provision, your finances, your abundance. I'm going to hand it over to you today so you'll know that I'm Lord. Then we pick up in verse 28. He says this, Because the Aramans have said, The Lord is a God of the mountains, but not a God of the valleys. I will hand over the entire immense horde to you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Hear me. Some of you have been working and hustling and grinding and doing everything you can to make it work. You've been trying to make, and make blessing happen. You've been trying to make an income happen. You've been trying to do it all. And hear me today. God is saying, if you'll give me the battle, I'll give you the victory. If you'll give me your Sabbath, if you'll give me the rest, then I'll give you the victory in your battle. Number two, celebration ensures you take time for reflecting. I know you're writing, but turn your neighbor and say reflecting. See, celebration ensures that you take time for reflecting. Now, what are we reflecting on? Well, there's three things that we reflect on. The first one is God's covenants. God's covenant. See, God makes us promises. He says, if you do this, I'll do this. If you follow through with your Sabbath, then I'll give you more than you can handle on the six days than you could have made on the seventh. If you'll give me your tithe, I'll make sure that you have more than you need with your 90% than you could have made happen with your 100%. See, he makes covenants with us that are contingent upon our step of faith. So then when we step into the covenant, guess what happens? Then he gives us consistency. The next one is God's consistency. We're talking about his provisions. How many of you have seen God consistently bless and take care of you the more consistently you walk in faith? And then what happens is through his provisions, what happens is then you step into God's completions where he takes you from one season to the next season. How many of you have ever stepped out of the season of struggle and into the season of blessing? How many of you have ever stepped out of the season of battle and into the season of victory, Right? But the beautiful part is then you get caught in this rotation of, uh, of blessing. Then you get caught in this rotation of covenant. And then you get caught into the consistent provision. And then you step into completions, which leads you back into a season of covenant. But then it takes you into the consistency. And then it takes you to the completion, which takes you back into covenant. And if, you're, if you'll step in faith, you'll live in this lifestyle of God coming through for you all the time. I don't know about you. That's where I want to live. Because I can make some things happen for me, it seems, but I need God to make all things work together for the good of those who love him. Come on, somebody. Psalms 23, 1 through 6 says it like this, and you've probably heard this verse before if you've ever been in a church or even been into a religious place. Some of y'all got a grandma's hanging over the toilet or the oven, okay, Psalms 23. So, but let's read it together because I want, I want you guys to grab a hold of something. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. It means I, some translations say, I shall not want, or I wouldn't want for anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures. How many of you know you can lie down or you can be made to lie down? He leads me beside quiet waters or still waters. And, and what that means there is, is what would happen is, is a shepherd would take his animals down to a, a river of water where the water is flowing. And when, it, when the waters became rough, whenever a season would happen that the rotters, waters were chaotic, what would happen is the, then the shepherd would take giant rocks and he would go out and he would build a little canal where the rocks would come out of the, uh, uh, from the land. And what it would be is no matter how bad the rapids were in the water, when the Lord would create still waters, as, or when the shepherd would create still waters, he would create this rock barrier, this wall that the rough waters would have to go around. But what would happen is right on the other side of that barrier, there's a quiet place of water. 
And for some of you, your life may be chaotic. The waters may be rushing by you. It may seem like you're in a rapid of life where things are just crazy, but God has a way of creating quiet, still spaces in the midst of chaotic waters. And so he creates this for you. He says, it refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesakes. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even in the midst of Popeye's, Chick-fil-A gets a table. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Anyway, sorry. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will live and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Which means you will dwell in the house of abundance. You will dwell in the house of celebration. You will dwell in the house of blessing forever. That's where I want to be. Celebrated. That's why I think small groups are so important because... In small groups, you get to be around people who are celebrating you. How many of y'all know we need to be celebrated more? Raise your hand if you want people to celebrate you more. It's okay. Be selfish for just this minute. I want people to celebrate me a little bit. How many of y'all are the ones that always give, give, give? And sometimes you look around like, man, ain't nobody here to give to me. Only seven of us. The rest of y'all good, huh? Okay. But what I love about small groups is it puts you in an environment where people are ready to give back. Matter of fact, we got a story. My man Zeke, who joined some small groups. Man, I love this dude so much. He's got that Louisiana swing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Chewed him. Anyway, so uh, we're going to watch this video about how he joined small groups. Go ahead and roll it, guys. Uh, born and raised in Houma, Louisiana, about an hour south of New Orleans. First one in my family to ever like move out or go to college or anything like that. So kind of flying blind. I went up to Ruston for college. I was Catholic and it's just, I think I had some bad anecdotal experience with people. Senior year of college, I started dating a, a Jewish girl who sang at a Methodist church. Confused me too, but just as an effort to smooth things out with her, you know, obviously make that work. I started going to church for that and kind of putting effort into that. Until she left me because I wasn't religious enough, so that definitely helped that one, right? Found a new, got a new job at the paper mill uh, in Cantonment, IP up there, and so when I got that, I moved down here. So my first Sunday, actually, I was, you know, a brand new, new no one, just kind of people inducing themselves to me. I met Juwan, and uh, he was like, hey, we got this small group, we just kind of hang out with him, going to see Cap Marvel. Give me your number, I'll shoot you a text. I said, okay, and then he didn't. And so then the next Sunday, I was kind of just giving him, I was messing with him about it, and he actually introduced me to Anthony Tragoni, who runs, or was the lead of the Hangout Small Group, I think it's called, and uh, got invited over to that house. I was like, ah, it seems like a nice, chill, laid back kind of thing, so if I could go out and meet some people. As like loud and obnoxious as I am, I'm all kind of a loner deep down, so a lot of times I just like enter, keep everything inside and kind of deal with my problems myself. You know, there's a few people I've, and I have asked already for just different things, with be it surface level stuff or maybe a little, you know, uh, help with deeper emotional, spiritual type things. If I could, I could reach out to them if I needed. If you're hesitant joining a small group the first time, don't be. I mean, it's not. There's a list of them. Just find one that has, I guess, whatever your hobbies are. I think. I mean, I don't know what the whole list is, but just find something that where people get together to do what you like. And then, I mean, hey, I showed up loud, obnoxious, and bright colors, and they were like, "Ah, hey, this dude's cool." So I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> you don't have to be. It's not. They don't really turn people away. Right? Everyone here is just trying to get to know people. Be real inviting. Uh, just don't be. Don't be nervous. Don't be afraid. I know it's. Probably a lot scary a lot of times, especially if you don't know anyone, but you have to take the first step if you're gonna, you know, make it out there, so. Yeah, you can put your hands together for my man, Zeke. Love his story. And so, that's the theme, right? We just need to be around people that are ready to celebrate us. At this church, we're building a culture of celebration. We celebrate people every Sunday. For some of you, man, it's been a while since you've been celebrated. And that's made it hard to go through life. Brings us to number three. You see, celebration helps you focus on repeating. Celebration helps you focus on repeating. You see, it's one thing to come through one season of life, but how many of you know life has a, a way of bringing us out of one season and tossing us right back into another? And they're all not all terrible, but man, it sure does feel like sometimes you're getting in over your head. It's kind of like the surfer who 
fell off his board and the wave crashed on top of him. And the second he gets up for air, there's another wave crashing right on top of him. And the second he gets back up for air, there's another wave. And sometimes life feels that way. That's why it's so important to be celebrated where you can be in an environment where there's, there's this repeat of victory. There's this repeat of blessing. There's this repeat of abundance. There's this repeat of seeing God come through for you. Because it's important that you celebrate what you want to see more of. Listen, you want to see more of something in your life? Start celebrating it when it happens in your life. And God will start to continually bring more of it back in. So living a life in small groups is key. As a matter of fact, in your worship guide, there's already a list. And, and we're going to be launching them next Sunday is when they start. But you can already start signing up today. Um, so in your worship guide is a list. And we want to encourage you guys to, to check that out. I mean, we got student small groups. We're kicking off our student small groups for brand new student small groups starting our student ministry uh, today. Man, we are pumped about that. If you have teenagers, man, make sure they sign up for that group because they need to be celebrated. How many of y'all know our teenagers need more celebration in their life about who they are, amen? And so our, student, our freedom small groups, listen, some of you have been dealing with stuff for years, some of you decades You've got deep roots in your heart of bitterness and unforgiveness. And God's ready to do something great with your life, but you're standing in the way. And I've been there. I know what that feels like. But I'm here to tell you today, join a freedom group. And in the same thing that God did through my heart in a freedom group, I've went through it myself. Pastor Dan, our founding pastor, he went through it himself. And I'm here to tell you today, if God did something miraculous in our hearts, I'm telling you, he'll do it in yours. Freedom groups, we got men groups, women, we got all kinds of small groups check them out. But here's the thing, get into a group and start getting celebrated and watch how God starts doing amazing things in your life. That brings you to Psalm 118. And I want you to hear, we're going to read this. It's a, it's a good portion of scripture, but we're going to, I want to read it. And I want you just to listen to how David describes his life with the Lord. We're talking about celebration. And I want you just to hear how he does it. And it's, you, I, it's my story. You can hear how I celebrate and we know, but I mean, sometimes it's good just to go back to what the Bible says about God. So let's read it. I, I just want you to, to listen and absorb what David is saying here. He says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried out to the Lord and he brought me into a spacious, quiet place. The Lord is with me and I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He's my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And I'll even add another word and say presidents, Democrat or Republican. It's better to trust in the Lord. All my enemies surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They surround me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and I was about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory echo in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Say mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand does mighty things. I will not die but live and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Come on, somebody. That's David talking about God. It gets better though. He says this in verses 23. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice. I'll even replace it with the word celebrate. Let us celebrate today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. And he has made his light shine on us. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. Man, David's on to something, y'all. Because even when you don't feel it, because the cool thing about David, I love David. 
Because you go back two chapters before, like two chapters later, he's talking about God. I don't know where I don't know where you're at. I'm struggling right now. I'm not sure this is going to work out. But then the next chapter he says, but you know what? You're still God and you will be my defense. You will be my victory. You will be my blessing. You will be my abundance. You will carry me. You will hold me. You will sustain me. You will be at my right hand and I will be at yours. You will give me victory in the midst of my paddle. You will create quiet spaces for me and you will celebrate over my life because you are God. David's on it, man. So this is the win at TC. Every time someone's saved, we celebrate. Last week, we had 12 first-time guests in the house, and seven people's eternity got shifted from hell to heaven. Come on, somebody. We celebrate all of them. Every time someone gets saved, we celebrate. Every time someone experiences freedom where their past is let go of and they step into the, the life that God has for them, we celebrate. Every time someone discovers their purpose and figures out what God made them to do, we celebrate. Every time someone starts making a difference with that purpose, we celebrate. So we celebrate every step of the way. Why? Because every story and every person, they all matter. Can we build a culture I'll even say, can we continue a culture of celebration where we make sure that every person that walks through our doors, wherever you are, sir, ma'am, maybe it's your first Sunday here. Listen to me. You matter, and we celebrate you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Let's pray, guys. Father, we just thank you for today. God, we love you, and we celebrate you. Jesus, you're awesome. You're so good. We celebrate you. We celebrate the fact that even though we had sin in our life and our sin separated us from you, when we, when we were, felt so distant from you, God, you, you saw it fit to send your son Jesus. And though the sin in our life separated us from you, though the areas of our life that we knew we shouldn't have been in separated us from you, Jesus went to the cross and when he died, he paid for our sins when we couldn't pay for them ourselves. And so God, we celebrate Jesus and the life that he gave for us. We celebrate you, God, and the son that you sacrificed for us. And we love you today. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed and your eyes closed today, Maybe you're in this room and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're in this room and sin in your life, much like mine has in the past, much like every person in this room has experienced the sin of your life has separated you from God. But you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm, I'm ready for God to bring me close. I'm ready to know him. I'm ready for a fresh start. I'm ready for a new beginning. And I'm ready for God to save me. I'm ready for him to wash away my sins and I'm ready for him to give me a fresh start. If that's you today, we want to pray for you. And I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to point you out. I want to invite you on a journey where God becomes the Lord of your life and you get a new beginning in Jesus. And if that's you today, with everyone's head bowed and your eyes closed, no one looking around, you want that new beginning. You want that fresh start. I just want you to raise your hand right now and say, that's me. Pastor, God bless you. Awesome. Yes. Hands are going. Once you put them up, you can put them down. I told you, we're not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray for you. And we want to see God give you a fresh start. Is there more that says, that's me, Pastor. I'm ready for a new beginning. I'm ready for a fresh start. Awesome. Yes. Maybe you're watching us online right now. You say, that's me, Pastor. I need God to give me a new beginning. I want to put my faith in him. And I want a fresh start. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray this prayer together. And this prayer doesn't make you saved. It's not magic. But your faith in Jesus alone is what makes you saved. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pray a prayer together. But this prayer, it's just putting words to the actions of your heart that says, I'm believing that Jesus died on the cross and paid for my sins so that I could be brought close to God. So let's pray this prayer together. And the whole church is going to pray it with you so you're not praying by yourself. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my wrongs. Make me clean, make me pure, make me whole. I believe that you died on the cross and I believe 
that you rose three days later through your life, through your death, and through your resurrection, I can be saved. So I give you my life. Make me brand new. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. TC, let's celebrate with all of those that prayed that this morning. Awesome, awesome, awesome.